Well, snow in Vancouver, but we're very much still in sun and surf mode here in Australia. And last Friday, we brought together three experts to discuss Surf Life Fat Saving Australia's latest education campaign, warning people about what to do if they get caught in a rip at the beach. Now, the main message from that campaign was you should swim parallel to the beach. It turned out to be quite a controversial one, though, and our panel discussion generated a lot of emails. One of our experts said, though, that the best way to survive a rip current was not to get caught in one in the first place. But how do you spot a rip? What do they look like? We brought back Dr. Ron Brander to answer that crucial question, which many of you were asking in your emails to us. Dr. Brander is a surf scientist with the University of New South Wales Environmental Sciences. He's also a lifeguard. Rob, welcome to breakfast. Uh, yeah, morning, friend. Um, our panel discussion on rips generated a lot of feedback, but the one question that, that people felt we didn't really get to or answer clearly enough for them last week was how to spot a rip. But before we get to that, can you just remind us again what a rip current is? Okay, well, a rip current, I always call them rivers of the sea because whenever you have a beach with a lot of breaking waves, all that water that comes in has to go back out some, somehow. And if you get a situation where that water going back out is squeezed between sandbars, for instance, you will get this really strong flowing current, which we call a rip. And most rips will take you from the beach pretty much out to the, the edge of the breaking waves. And uh, what we were discussing last week was how dangerous they are. How common are rip-related rescues at our beaches? Oh, very common. Uh, last year, the statistics I saw, there was 25,000 surf rescues or beach rescues, and 90% of those were related to rips. That's an awful lot of rescues. So I guess it brings us to the, uh, the point of this interview. If the best advice for surviving and not needing rescue is to not get caught in a rip in the first place, how do we know where the rips are? What do they look like? What are we looking for? Well, I guess my philosophy at the moment is that, you know, we, we don't cross the street without looking both ways. And I think we need to get in the habit of when we go to the beach thinking about rips. But you're not going to learn how to spot one off of a piece of paper with a bunch of diagrams and instructions. You really need to see pictures. They're very visual. But all of our beaches with surf waves or, or breaking waves will have rips at some time. Now, the most common type of rip that we have in Australia looks like a nice dark gap heading some direct or some direction offshore between areas of breaking waves, which is the shallow sandbars. So it looks like calm water. Yeah, well, that's the problem. I mean, so when you go to the beach, don't just run in. You spend five or ten minutes looking at the conditions, and if you can see these sort of darker gaps that look like calm water, almost like paths going out through the surf, and they can go straight out, they can go at angles, but if they're persistent in location, chances are that's the rip. So if you see that, what you should, should you do then? If you want to go in the water, do you head for the white water? Do you head for the breaking surf? That's the best advice. But as a lot of people have pointed out to me, well, that seems counterintuitive to a lot of people. A lot of people without good swimming and surf skills would say, well, that's the last place I want to swim is the white water. But what you should remember is that the white water, yes, it might, <laughs> the breaking might be heavy and rough, but white water is bringing you back to the beach. So in terms of rips areas of white water and breaking waves is always safer. It just goes to show what you said there I had no idea of. I thought when you looked out for a rip, you, thought you looked for sort of currents going across each other, currents going every which way. Yeah, I hear all sorts of stuff, but it's not true. I mean, rips can behave differently. Some rips can literally start from a deep hole against the beach and flow straight offshore. Others can start by flowing along the beach, and they can flow along the beach for 50 metres, 100 metres or more, but at some point sort of turn that corner. Because a lot of rips sort of, a lot of our beaches have sandbars and deep channels and gutters, whatever you want to call them, and the water is just trying to get offshore and it's following those patterns of sandbars and gutters. And, and a lot of these channels head offshore. All right. Is it well beyond the time where we should have some kind of national spotter rip campaign? And, and I, I think you've already got, you've made a video that's shown in schools. Is that right? I mean, should that be a more universal program? Yeah, it should be. I mean, that, that video is only available on the internet because that's our, the rights. We had to purchase footage. But anyway, but, but I've tried to make the schools aware of it. But, but rips are visual. And, and the more you watch these, you see pictures of rips and you see movies of them and we put purple dye in. People remember that. And I now have people coming up to me, the video's been around for years, saying, look, we didn't really, we go to the beach all the time, we didn't know what rips are, but now my kids are pointing out the rips, it's like a game. And that's what you want. So the more it seems obvious to me, if, you, if you're able to spot a rip, even rudimentary, rudimentally, um, you're not going to get in it. So that's, that's what we have to do, get it in the schools, show a video of some sort on the planes, show new migrants to Australia. And, and eventually and show, show it on TV. So basically a public education campaign with the visuals. Yeah, and it needs to be educational. All, I mean, the debate we had last week with all these slogans, what should you do, stay afloat or swim parallel? 
those slogans aren't educational. They don't tell you anything about rips and how to spot them. So we need to get a campaign that is really educational. All right. It seems like rip awareness is starting to grow, um, perhaps because of the uh, high, highly publicised deaths this year. Uh, the number of emails, the response we had to our discussion last week, very, very high. If people want to have a look, say, at your video or any other uh, visual explanation of how to spot a rip, just briefly, Rob, where can they find it? Well, you can go on to YouTube or you can go to my, my website, which is scienceofthesurf.com, and it's right there, and it goes for about four minutes, and it's on the front page. And, and I also have another feature called Rip of the Month, and I'm starting to get people sending me pictures of rips from around the world, and I put them up, and I just explain, well, this is why the rip looks the way it does, and this is the type of rip. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks very much, Rob. Thanks, friend. That's Rob Brander, the surf scientist from UNSW, and scienceofthesurf.com is where you can go if you want to look at his video showing how to spot a rip. And if you want to be reminded of last Friday's discussion about rips, you can watch the video on our website and on YouTube.